The folks at Math Counts must love counting shapes, because they've got tons of problems like this one. Here we have to count the number of parallelograms in this grid. Now this one's pretty easy. There's just nine of them. What's that? There are more? Where? Big one. Oh, yeah, I mean, a whole big one here is one. So that's, that's ten, nine plus one. Long, skinny ones. Oh, yeah, you got a long, skinny one down here and slightly smaller one here. Oh, there's this two by two up in the corner here, so that gives us 11, 12, 13. Uh, this is a terrible way to count the parallelograms. If we keep going like this, I mean, how will I know I've gotten them all? And I'll probably end up counting the same one over and over again because I'm kind of old and I forget things. Oh, so, you know, one key way to avoid counting the same one over and over again and making sure you get them all is get organized. And that's a key in a casework counting problem. You have to count everything once and only once. And the key way to do that is to get organized in the way you count. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to organize ourselves based on the shapes and the sizes of the parallelograms that we're counting. So we're going to start off with the little ones, the little one by ones. We'll start off with those. And then we'll move on to the rest of the ones that are just in one column. So the one by twos and the one by threes. And then after we finish counting all of those, we'll move on to the ones that take two columns. Now those are like the two by ones, the two by twos, and the two by threes. And of course, after we knock those off, then we move on to the ones that take all three columns. The three by ones, the three by twos, and the three by threes. All right, and now we can see every single parallelogram that's in this grid is gonna fall into exactly one of these categories. All right, so this is gonna enable us to count everything once and only once. We'll get every single parallelogram somewhere in here, we'll only get it once, so we won't count anything twice. All right, so we have a plan, we're organized, let's knock it off. The one by ones, those are the little ones, there's obviously nine of those. Now the one by twos, they're in a single column, they're two parallelograms tall, so there's two, there's one on the bottom, one on the top. There's two in each column, there are three columns, so two times three, that gives us six of those. And the one by threes, those are the ones that are just a whole column. There are three columns, so there are three of those. Now moving on to the two by ones, it's a lot like the one by twos. You've got two in each row, and there are three rows, so there's a total of six of these little two by one parallelograms. Now for the two by twos, there's one in each corner. You've got a two by two in the bottom left, two by two in the upper left, one in the upper right, one in the bottom right. There are four of those. Now the two by threes, there's one, there's another one, there's two of those. And you see we're taking an organized approach to counting each one of these cases as well. Now the three by ones, those are the rows. Whole row, whole row, whole row. There are three rows. There's one of these in each row. And the three by twos, it's just like the two by threes. There's one. There's another one. So there's two of those. The three by three, that's an easy one. There's just one of those. So now we've got them all. We've counted all of our parallelograms. All we have to do is add up all of our cases. Nine plus six plus three, that's 18. Six plus four plus two is 12. Three, two, and one is six. 18, 12, that's 30, add 6 is 36, and we know we've got them all. We know that we've counted every single parallelogram once and only once, and we get 36. What? Yeah, yeah, 36. It's a perfect square. It's 6. It's 6 squared. Hey, wait a second. You may be on to something. And whenever we do a counting problem with a bunch of casework and we go through all this, these grimy details, and we get to something that's a nice, neat answer, like a perfect square, we should step back and say, maybe there's a smarter way to do this problem. Now, first, we should make sure it's not just a coincidence. It could be a coincidence that this came out to a perfect square. And the way we'll test to see if this is a coincidence or not, we'll look at a simpler case. Let's look at starting with a 2 by 2 parale parallelogram. Start with a 2 by 2 and we can count the number of parallelograms here just using casework, like we did over here. There are four little ones. There are two of these vertical column ones. There are two of the horizontal, the row ones. That's four plus two plus two is eight. And then there's the whole big parallelogram, which gives us nine. Six squared. Three squared. 
Maybe it's not a coincidence. Hmm. Now this is 6 squared. That's, that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 squared. And 9, uh, that's 1 plus 2. You take that and square it. So this is 1 plus 2 squared. This is 1 plus 2 plus 3 squared. Whoa. That can't be a coincidence. Let's take a closer look at this. You can write this as 1 plus 2 plus 3 times 1 plus 2 plus 3. And if we do the distributive property to multiply this out, we'll take the 1 and multiply it by each of these, the 2 and multiply it by each of these, the 3 and multiply it by each of these, and then add up all those products. Let's take a closer look. 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, What's going on here? You know, you know where this is headed. 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 9. So if I multiply this out with the distributive property, I get all the numbers that popped up in this grid. What's going on here? I mean, at this point, we haven't explained anything. We just found all these wacky patterns. <sighs> What's another way to think about this? 1 plus 2 plus 3 is, is 6, and that's... It's 4 times 3 divided by 2. We're squaring that. And then over here, the 9, we can think of that as 3 times 2 over 2 squared. That'll get us 9. That's... Does that... I mean, what this... I couldn't really figure out what's going on here, why this gets us a count of the parallelograms. But this... Is there a reason? This 4 times 3 over 2, what could we be counting with that? Well, there are 4 of these diagonal lines, and there are four horizontal lines. I got it! Check this out! You're gonna love this. Alright. So if we're gonna make a parallelogram, how are we gonna make a single parallelogram? It's one of my favorite strategies in counting, I think. Constructive counting. How can I construct one of what I'm trying to count? How can I pick one parallelogram here? Well, I'm gonna pick two horizontal sides, and I'm gonna pick two of the diagonal sides. And where those intersect, that makes a parallelogram. I take any two horizontals and any two diagonals, I'm going to make one parallelogram. And if I start with the parallelogram, I can extend those, extend their sides, and I'll have two of the diagonal lines and two of the horizontal lines. So all I have to do to count the number of parallelograms is to count the number of ways I can choose two horizontal lines, and choose two of the diagonal lines, because every time I choose two horizontals and two diagonals, I get one of my parallelograms. And every single parallelogram goes with one of these choices. So now our problem is just to count the number of ways I can pick two horizontals and two diagonals. Now I have four horizontal lines, so there are four ways for me to choose the first horizontal line. And that leaves three choices left for the other horizontal line. But I have to be careful here. I have to divide by 2 to account for the fact that I can choose them in either order. If I choose this one and then this one, I get the same two lines as if I choose this one and then this one. So there are 4 times 3 divided by 2 ways for me to pick two horizontal lines. Now, of course, there are 4 diagonal lines here as well, so there are 4 times 3 over 2 ways to choose two of the diagonal lines as well. So. There's this many ways to choose two horizontal lines, this many ways to choose two diagonal lines, and I just multiply them together, because for each choice of horizontal lines, I have this many choice, choices of a pair of diagonal lines. So I multiply these together, and sure enough, I get my 6 times 6 is 36. And I found, found a clever way to do this problem. Now think about that a bit, and when you really think you've got it, and you really think you understand it, Count the parallelograms here. Good luck counting that with casework. Are you ready for some real math? Got a checklist here for you. You got a video camera? All right. How about the Math Counts Handbook? Good, you got that too. Mad teaching skills. You've been watching me. You must have picked up something. Better looking than Richard? That's not funny. But who are we kidding? You got that too. So it looks like you're ready for some real math. You take your video camera, your Math Counts handbook, make movies about the math problems, upload it right here at realmath.org, 
and win a trip to Orlando.